Hello everybody, welcome back to another session of the Hoppery. My name is Mark Starr and tonight, well I'm going to do a bit of a different beer. Um, you know, you guys have been watching the show, you know that I love to drink stouts, double IPAs, barley wines, and to my defense, you know, I mean it's just freezing here in Kansas City this time of year, so I don't drink a whole lot of lagers and wheat beers and Hefeweizens and um, you know, pale ales and things like that. This time of year I really kind of crave um, some bigger beers. But tonight um, I was looking through my most recent issue of Draft Magazine and I came across this page they do every month called On Tap and I noticed they had an article on the Celebrator. Um, it's by a brewery in Germany called Einger and um, it actually comes from Ein, Germany and you know, I've heard a lot of really good things about this beer. I think I've maybe had it once or twice before. Um, but, you know, I thought I'd kind of share this one with you guys tonight. Maybe do a little bit of a different style for a change. Um, this one is a, as I mentioned earlier, it's a lager. Um, it's called a Doppelbach, actually. Um, but, you know, people ask a lot of times, and they ask me on occasion, what's the difference in an ale and a lager? Um, you know, you could really get into, um, you know, like the details of brewing if you want. The basic gist of it is that um, there are different temperatures that the yeast will ferment at for a lager and an ale. In fact, um, you have a lower temperature um, for these lagers. So, um, anyway, I, 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 you know, I've been craving something a little bit different and I figured this would probably be a good start. So. Um, as you can see when you buy these bottles, they come with this little goat on there. I don't really understand the purpose, though I think it's kind of cool just to hang on to those, so I will. Maybe I'll make a necklace out of it uh, with one of my little girl's um, dolls. Who knows? But um, So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and bust the cap on it and uh, get to pouring it and uh, see what we got going on here. Now, a Doppelbach, as the name suggests, is basically a double Bach. Um, but one thing that you'll notice when you read up on these is that that doesn't always necessarily mean that it's twice as strong. Um, these are a lot more flavorful, obviously, so that's good. That's what I want, something really flavorful and, and potentially complex for this time of year. But um, well, let's go ahead and uh, I'm going to move some stuff around here. Got me a new buddy. Got a little fish up here to hang out with me. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and get my nose in here and uh, see what we got going on. So right away, I, I noticed that there's a lot of, um, you know, like dark caramel going on in here. It, it definitely smells sweet. Um, it also smells like it's got like figs and raisins and some of those darker kind of sticky fruits going on. In terms of hops, I can tell there are just a few hops in here. Now, this isn't really a hop-driven beer. Um, the malt is really kind of more of the... Um, star here, I guess you could say. Um, so really, this is you know smelling to me a lot more like the um, the Abbey style, uh, you know, quadruples and doubles and things like that. So let me give it one more smell, and then we'll go ahead and dig in. Yeah, this actually smells kind of good. There's a faint amount of alcohol, and what's surprising to me that you know about the fact that there's a you know a little bit of smell of alcohol is that this is only 6.7%. Um, so that's really not that high. When you think about your you know, average lager ranking in somewhere around 5%, this is not a whole lot you know, more sturdy or strong than that. Though I will tell you, I bet it has uh, you know, twice the flavor. So anyway, one last smell. Just getting the alcohol, the dark fruits, raisins, figs, the malt caramels. So let's go ahead and taste it. Those fruits come across on the palate like really well. Um, you know, lots of raisin. You know, I talk in the past about how when you chew on a raisin, you know, think about it, how gummy it is. Um, but there's a sort of tartness to a raisin. And, you know, that's kind of what I get from the flavor here. You know, figs, you know, maybe not so much. It's, it's really the prunes and the raisins. The more, you know, kind of uh, sticky 
um, types of fruits like that that I get. Maybe even some, you know, like really uh, dried cherries. Um, when I say dried cherries, again, I mean, you know, the kind that are real chewy and, um, but I actually really like this one a lot. In fact, if you're somebody who uh, likes beers like the Chimay Blue um, or some of the other Abbey style quadruples that really kind of have that heavy, dark fruit, sometimes I'll say great bubblegum flavor, um, this is really kind of similar to those, but with a much, um, they're a lot easier to drink, I'll just put it that way. You know, where those beers aren't really session beers, they're the kind of beers that you want to just sit down by fire, um, you know, drink them over the course of an hour or so. You know, I could see probably drinking a couple of these in a night and, uh, you know, being just fine. Now, they're probably a little bit more expensive. I think this one bottle may have been, you know, around three, three fifty, maybe, maybe not more than that. But um, anyway, I really kind of enjoy this. There's a good amount of balance. Um, you know, I don't think I talked about the color, but um, you know, holding this one up to a light, it's uh, it's really kind of a nice warm dark brown, and there's quite a bit of that ruby red color right around the edges, which is really nice. Um, this doesn't get a whole lot of head, um, though I think this one really benefits from a tulip glass, just because I think it really helps facilitate getting some um, nice fluffy head. It's you know kind of an off white tan color, um, you know in terms of lacing. You know, I don't really consider swirling the glass and seeing what sticks to the side as lacing. It's more of what's left behind as the beer goes, you know, down the glass as you drink it. But so not a ton of lacing on here. I really do like the color a lot, though. That ruby is just—I mean, it's popping right when you hold it up to a light. You'll see it. Um, but overall, you know, I think this is a really enjoyable beer. Um, I'd like to, you know, really try at least five to ten others just so that I can kind of reflect back on this one and see where that, you know, where it situates. Uh, and the reason why I say that is that when you go out to, and, and I visit these sites a lot, you know, I, I'm sure that's pretty obvious, but um, if you go to ratebeer.com, you'll notice that this is the number one rated Doppelbach out there, which, you know, obviously is one of the reasons why I wanted to um, kind of start with this one and also because I've had it before. Um, but, you know, I think this is a really good beer to kind of, again, get those folks who are really kind of wanting a gateway into some other styles. Um, you know, you can say, well, what are you drinking today? If they're drinking lagers and things like that, again, I think this will be, you know, a really good transition for them. But You know, as it's starting to warm up here a little bit as well, I do get a very faint amount of coffee, but not a whole lot. So it's just right on the back end. But well, anyway, guys, you know, thanks a lot for uh, continuing to come back. Um, I'm not going to give you my Twitter spill anymore. What I'd like to do is just ask that you guys go to my website, which is www.thehoppery.com. Um, you can click on the icon up in the corner and you can subscribe to my Twitter. Um, you can come back to YouTube, watch, you know, leave comments, whatever you want. But, um, you know, we'll continue to work through these beers, having a great time. And uh, anyway, but my name is Mark Starr, and we'll talk to you later. Cheers.